Hey everyone, my name is Anand Chitalia and today we learn how to play this Indian game called Indus 2500 BC. In this game, all players are architects in the Indus Valley civilization making their own cities. The player who makes the best city gets the most points and in the end, a player who gets the most points wins the game. Give each player a city map sheet and a pen. Separate the resource cards into four equal piles. Shuffle the calamity cards. Take two from the top and place them in piles two and four as shown and keep the rest of the cards in the box. They will not be used in the game. Now, shuffle only the second and the fourth pile such that the calamity cards are thoroughly mixed in them. This is according to the rule book. Put all the decks together starting with the first deck in order and do not shuffle it. Now reveal as many number of cards from this deck as many players are playing. We will be showing a two player game so I have revealed two cards. This becomes your marketplace. Now. Shuffle the scoring cards and reveal the top two cards placing them face up. Make sure that all players can see them. Keep the rest of the scoring cards back in the box. Shuffle the city setup cards and give one to each player their own card. Keep the rest in the box. All players must choose together to either play the A side or the B side. For beginners, I would recommend playing the A side and for a challenging game, try the B side. All players may now write the name of their city on top of their sheet. All players must make the starting buildings in their sheet according to their city setup cards. Make sure you draw the buildings and terrains at the right location. The designer has marked the rows and columns for the same. Additionally, you can find the row and column number in these city setup cards as well. If you notice, each player's city will be divided by a brown thick border. The dark colored area is the upper level and the light one is the lower level. Decide who goes first. The rulebook says the player who last visited an excavation site goes first. If players can't determine that, then the youngest player starts. Give them the first player token. And now we are ready to play Indus. Let's have a look at how to play. There are four phases in the game. Pick, plan, build and replenish. In the first phase, starting with the first player, each player picks up one card from the marketplace. They may pick either one of the open terrain cards or the top card from the resource deck. Now let's talk about the plan phase. Keeping in mind the restrictions each player has to think how they will use the cards they have picked up. Next is the build phase. If you've taken a terrain card, make that terrain in the pattern indicated in your city. The pattern card can be made how it is, but you may also rotate or flip the pattern and then make it. There are some cards which give you options in terrains and patterns. Players may choose only one to draw. In some cards, you may notice a wall symbol on the right edge. If you have picked up this card, you must draw a wall on the outer edge of your pattern. Make sure the pattern that you draw can be fully made either on the lower level or the upper level. The pattern cannot be on both. Once you've used the terrain cards, players may discard them. Players have to pay additional resources to draw some buildings like the reservoir, granary and the bathhouse. If a player has the required resources, they may discard them now in order to make that building. Remember. The granary and the bath house are buildings which can only be built in the upper level of the city. Also keep in mind that the granary and the bath house take 4 spaces while a reservoir takes only 1 space in your city. If you had picked up any purple artifact cards, 
then make sure not to discard them as they will be scored at the end of the game. Let's have a look at the replenish phase. It's a pretty simple phase. In this one, change the first player. To do that, rotate the first player marker to the next player clockwise. Next, players have to replenish the marketplace. Open new terrain cards by flipping the top cards from the deck. Make sure to only replenish the empty spaces. Any leftover cards from the previous round shall remain in play. In Indus, players play in four phases. In the first phase, players must pick one card from the marketplace, starting with the first player. This could be an open terrain card, a resource card from the top of the deck, or a purple artifact card. In the second phase, players take a moment to think about how to best use the cards which they have in the build phase. In the third phase, players draw their terrains and may also choose to pay resource cards to build their special buildings. In the last phase, rotate the first player marker clockwise and replenish the market from the deck. Now let's talk about the Calamity cards. Calamity cards may partially disrupt or destroy your city. There are two ways in which players will encounter Calamity cards in the game. If during the pick phase, a player picks up the top card of the deck, revealing the Calamity, that Calamity card does not get resolved immediately. If players encounter the Calamity card in the replenish phase, they must resolve it immediately. Now let's have a look at how to resolve the Calamities. In this example, I would like to show how to resolve the Earthquake card. If you have revealed this Calamity card, then all players may refer to the picture and choose any one house in their city and cross it out. However, along with that house, any terrains or buildings on all edge adjacent sites also must be crossed out up to two spaces. Do remember, if there are any empty adjacent spaces, they do not get crossed out. If the house you chose is at the edge of the map, then you can only cross out the terrains and buildings which are inside the city. Another example we see here is the plague. This card says that players may cross out the citadel in their city and also cross out terrains and buildings diagonally to the citadel. Remember that any crossed out sections in your map due to the calamities will not get scored. There are several other calamities in the game like drought, flood, locust attack and landslide. All of these have different effects in the game when revealed. Remember during the setup we had inserted two calamity cards in the deck? Players continue playing till they reveal the second calamity card in the game. Once players reveal and resolve the second card, players move on to scoring their cities. All players now count the total houses, canals, farms, forests and walls which they have made in their cities and write it down in the big box in the scoring area. The player who has built the most of each type of terrain or building gets 5 points which the player has to mention on the small box above their terrain box. If any players get tied for the highest, all tied players are awarded 5 points each. All other players get 0 points which they can record in their boxes. For every special building that players have made by giving resources, they get 3 points for each building in their city which they have to record in the relative boxes. Players now score for any artifact cards they may have collected during the game. Scores are calculated based on every unique set of artifact cards. If a player has a 1 card set, then they score 1 point. If they have a 2 card set, then they get 2 points. If they have collected a 3 card set, then they get 4 points. And if they manage to get a set of all 4 unique cards, then they get 7 points. Players have to total their artifact card points and write it in the artifact scoring box. And finally, let's take a look at the scoring cards. According to the scoring conditions, in each half of the scoring cards, players have to write their scores in these boxes. Some conditions might mention that if a player has made terrains next to a building, they will score points written on top for each terrain built that way. Some other conditions might say 
that if a player has drawn terrains in a specific sequence, they get these points. Some may also mention that if you've built walls next to buildings, you will get points either for the wall or the adjacent buildings. The game comes with many different scoring cards and each card specifies the conditions with a clear drawing example in it for end game scoring. After filling all the boxes with your scores, players have to now total their scores and the player with the highest tally of points wins the game. Let's have a look at some things to remember. When players are drawing walls, they have to make sure to draw it only at the edge of their pattern. If a player has already made a building or a terrain on a space, they may not make another building or terrain over it in the game. Drawing of the terrain after picking up terrain card is mandatory. Players cannot discard their card without doing so. Players may choose to rotate their pattern or even flip the pattern before drawing it in their city. Make sure the pattern that you draw can be fully made either on the lower level or the upper level. The pattern cannot be on both. In most of the scoring cards, the term edge adjacent is mentioned. This means that the terrains or buildings are eligible for scoring only if they share a side to each other. If they don't, then the scoring doesn't apply. This rule also applies across levels. If the starting building or terrain is on a different level than the adjacent one, the player doesn't count score of the adjacent building or terrain. If a calamity card is revealed during the market replenish phase, players must resolve it immediately. If it is revealed during the pick phase, then players have to resolve it at the end of that round. If at all, there is a tie in the scores after the final scoring, the player with the least number of empty spaces wins the game. And those are all the rules of this flip and write game, Indus 2500 BCE. If you have any questions or feedback, do let us know in the comments and we'll definitely reply over there. And also if you want to check us out on other social media platforms, so we are there. Uh, just write the name at the rate Chayan Games on all the search bars of Instagram, Facebook and we'll appear over there. And yeah, hope you subscribe and we'll be doing a lot of more gameplay videos as well as how to plays and reviews on our channel. Bye-bye.